Tom Stocker never met the famous Bostonian he's trying to create a memorial for, but he feels passionately that the city should honor this native son, and he's convincing a lot of others. When the legendary TV series Star Trek premiered in 1966, it took little time for Leonard Nimoy's Mr. Spock to rivet viewers and rival Captain Kirk for attention. A lot of people identified with him because he was the other. He was the visitor. Tom Stocker is not a Trekkie. He is a renowned Boston artist, best known for his near 3D-like realistic paintings of rare rugs. He has also become something of an authority on another creative Boston artist, the late Leonard Nimoy. I really do feel a connection. Maybe it's because of the way that we grew up in the neighborhoods that we grew up in. Spock may have been from the planet Vulcan, but in real life, Leonard Nimoy was raised in a galaxy not far, far away at all the historic West End of Boston. He loved Boston, loved the neighborhood, loved his friends, loved his family, but he also worked as a teenager growing up selling newspapers downtown. Alas, by the time Nimoy had left his beloved West End of Boston, it was bulldozed and wrecking balled into rubble, a vibrant, colorful, multi-ethnic neighborhood giving way to what was ironically called urban renewal and the generic anonymous apartments and high-rises of today. A true neighborhood, no more. These buildings are sitting on the street where he lived. Chambers, which was Chambers yeah. Street. Today, of Nimoy's former neighborhood, only a church, a single tenement, and two other barely surviving buildings remain. But the West End house. Yes. Nimoy spent a lot of time there. Absolutely. He was there for all sorts of activities. Safe to say, the West End neighborhood of Boston was a guiding influence throughout ne Leonard Nimoy's life. Absolutely. The neighborhood and Nimoy himself, who died in 2015, are gone. But Tom Stocker came to feel strongly that Boston should find a way to honor a remarkable man who may have traveled the universe, but never forgot his way home. He comes back. He's always there for the city. The Boys and Girls Club, many charitable events. Also, he and his wife, Susan Bay, created a foundation for the arts. He loved Boston. Never forgets Boston, always came back to the city. So in 2017, the Leonard Nimoy Memorial Project began in earnest. You were determined from the start, though, that it be outside. Outdoor sculpture where it was accessible to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Outside. And the form of the sculpture itself? It was almost as if Spock himself reached out. Vulcan greeting. Yeah. <laughs> and I, ah, that's it. That's it. The idea locked in. That hand gesture, live long and prosper, it's a great symbol, universal symbol in a way. I thought it was great. At his sandwich studio, accomplished sculptor David Phillips will ultimately translate the Vulcan greeting vision into a uniquely tall 20-foot outdoor sculpture. Three plus times taller than we are. But I think it needs that monumental scale to get it across. I don't think you'd want a small one. So I'm thinking big at this point. What we love about the sculpture is it has an ethereal quality to it and an almost eternal quality to it. These primal things that sort of make you think about the future. In 2020, Boston's Museum of Science officially agreed to be the home of the Nemo Memorial, where it will occupy one end of a grass area at the front entrance. For museum president Tim Ritchie, it's an irresistible mix of symbol and mission. Our mission is to inspire a lifelong love of science. That's the mission of the museum. We're not a backward looking museum. We're a forward-looking museum, and Star Trek is always looking forward, and it gets people seeing themselves in science. These days, with more key elements of the Memorial Project in place, Tom Stalker is forward-looking too, doing all the little things he can to continue to raise interest, raise money, all for a man he never met, and a cause that came only from the heart. The past several years, it's like become a part of me. I really do want to have something that I can say, I help do this. 
Needless to say, the past few years have not been easy ones in terms of fundraising. But as of this month, Tom tells me that the Nemo Memorial Project is now at 76% of its goal of raising half a million dollars. If you'd like to help, you'll find a link on our Chronicle website. Well, our next story takes us to Vermont, where, true to the season, there was snow on the ground. Very helpful when you're skiing right after this.